Hello and welcome back to the Ethanol Review. I'm here at the alcohol shrine that is Liquor Express, our sponsor of this episode. Thank you, Liquor Express. You fucking rock. Anyway, tis the season for pumpkin beer, so today I'm going to do a blind pumpkin beer tasting. Six different beers. Maybe seven. Definitely six. And we're gonna find out which one of these guys has the best juice without the fancy pumpkin labeling. Normally, I'm not one for pumpkin beers with a few exceptions. There are certain barrel-aged variants and imperial pumpkin beers that are actually fantastic and age really, really well. For example, Rum King. That's a super imperial pumpkin beer that's aged in rum barrels from Southern Tier. I think that Liquor Express may carry it. They did a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if they still have it or not, but that is an awesome pumpkin beer. These other six though, or seven that I'm gonna try, I have had none of them, and they are mid-range ABV, pretty run-of-the-mill, theoretically, pumpkin beers. So I'm gonna rank them, write them all down for you, and we're gonna discuss which one of these is the best, which one's the worst, which ones are okay. See you in the episode. And you're just gonna go back and cut it? Yeah, I do. There's a lot of editing that happens. Yeah, I'll probably cut to you, like, I don't know, whatever the fuck. You know. Do you want me to do hard pour, soft pour? I like head. As much head as you can give me. <laughs> Baby. Beer number one. Mm. <sighs> Lots of baking spice and brown sugar. Allspice, nutmeg. There's a nice bready maltiness to it, which is good. That's a treat. It's not all spice, which happens sometimes with shitty pumpkin beers. About the same. The nose and the palate are right in line. Lots of spice, lots of brown sugar, lots of malty, bready goodness. <sighs> pretty good. Overall, pretty, pretty damn good. Number two. Right away, the color is very different. The first one was a a darker reddish kind of amber. This has more of a golden kind of pale wheat character. It's a little hazy. And there's also head. There's, a resi there's some, some floating head there, some proteins. And the other one had zero. So it makes me wonder if this guy is using uh, a grain heavy in protein like flaked wheat or flaked barley or something like that. The nose is pretty quiet. It's um, very muted compared to the last one. I mean, there's a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of spice, but otherwise, the nose is... I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know you're smelling beer. <laughs> there's a lot of spice in the palate, kind of like burning, that, that amount of spice where it kind of... It makes me think of the burn of ginger, like almost like capsaicin. Not very good. <laughs> the nose is very poor. And the palate is just one dimension of this heavy spice. Um, kind of like cinnamon. Almost like if you're chewing on one of the, uh, the uh, red sticks of gum. I can't remember what it's, it's not spearmint. Wrigley's. I don't know, it's the red gum. It kind of tastes like heavy cinnamon. Big red. Big red. It's like big red. You just got that first bite and that spice, that fucking heat, and it comes back in the back of your palate. That's what this tastes like. Number three. This is more akin to the first one in the color. See how it's a bit more amber? 
don't know if you can pick it up in this lighting or not. Uh, a, a deeper red hue, like right in the center, uh, which I think that may be good. Usually that indicates, not always, a maltier character. Some of the more malty grains tend to have a reddish hue to them. <clears throat> the spice here is restrained, and it's more akin to the first one, but with less spice, more malt, this one actually kind of smells like real pumpkin, a little bit, like a slightly roasted pumpkin. And if you've ever smelled pumpkin just raw, it can smell like a lot of other starches, right? When you roast the pumpkin, you caramelize some of the natural sugars, that's when you actually get the essence of what a pumpkin is. We've been tricked into thinking that pumpkin is the spice that is added to pumpkin, like cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, clove, but really pumpkin has its own character. I think this one has actually a little bit of real pumpkin in it. Really good aroma. The palate's a little watery, a little thin. The nose is much better than the palate in this case. It, it tastes like I put a couple ice cubes in it. But the nose is really good. Man. It was so promising <laughs> and it just failed on the palate. That's too bad. <clears throat> Number four. <laughs> I didn't actually look very closely at the list of the six beers that were being poured today. If I would have, <laughs> I probably would be able to identify what this is. It's very, very dark. So it's gotta be a porter or a stout or something like that, a black pumpkin beer if such a thing exists. This is drastically different than the other beers, clearly. Whether or not it'll taste good, that's the real question. Smoke. Smells like smoke. <sighs> yeah, it smells like a smoked stout. Um, you know, coffee and dark, deep chocolate and smoke. I don't think this beer has pumpkin in it. I think that this is like a, uh, there's a bit of trickery in here. There's absolutely no pumpkin I'm getting at all. It's just like a smoked porter or smoked stout. I'm not getting any kind of spice, not, no kind of pumpkin, no brown sugar, nothing you would traditionally think of as a pumpkin beer. It's just smoked coffee. I mean, as a beer, if this was a different blind tasting, if I was tasting porters or stouts or whatever the hell this is, I'd say, oh, you know what? It's pretty good. I mean, it's not great, but it's at least okay. But there's noth nothing pumpkin-y about this. <laughs> this is, uh, it doesn't belong. Huh, okay. This one smells different than all the other ones. It's like there's a spice in there that doesn't belong to your typical spice cabinet for pumpkin beer. <sighs> Almost reminds me of a, uh, it's not garam masala, it's like an Indian spice. <sighs> Unusual. The nose is good, it's just unlike all the others. Not counting the fucking porter thing, whatever that was. I like this. This is the most refreshing of the bunch. It's got a little lift to it. It's a little bright. Doesn't have a heavy hand with the spices. I wouldn't say that I smell pumpkin per se, but some of those baking spices are there, but they're very, very quiet and kept on a leash. There's good substance to the body. This is the most quaffable of the group.
got a good head. This one's not bad. That doesn't taste like a traditional pumpkin beer though, but I think that's a good thing. Six, the last one. Another really dark one. So I suspect this is a pumpkin porter or pumpkin stout. Hopefully it resembles pumpkin. <laughs> At least a fucking smidge. It's so hard for pumpkin or pumpkin spice to come through though, when you have such a heavy Charactered style of beer like a porter or a stout. This one smells like a, a stout to me because all you really can get is chocolate and fucking coffee There's a little something hiding back there like far 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 tucked away down in there Like maybe a hint of allspice, but just a fucking tiny teeny tiny little bit But it smells like a good stout This is a big boy. There's some uh, there's some alcohol in there, some some weight. Just like the other dark one though, I wouldn't just think this is a pumpkin beer. I kind of like it, but it just is out of place here. It doesn't make any sense within this this uh, this tasting we're doing. It's pretty good. It's heavy. You taste the booze is there. The heat is there. It tastes like a 12% alcohol beer. I mean, that's the, that's the feeling it kind of gives me. Okay, so number one, whole hog, you said? This was the best score of the bunch. Uh, this one actually tasted like a pumpkin beer, which hopefully you can kind of see the label. This one tasted like a pumpkin beer, but it was well put together. It wasn't too spiced. It wasn't too withdrawn. It had some good character, some good substance. Yeah, this was good. I gave it a 7.4 out of 10, which is the highest score. Um, and it earned it. This one, I would buy this one. I'm glad this was the first that I tasted. Do you wanna try it? Yep. Damn good beer. Good job, whole hog. Uh, this would be a really easy beer to take to Thanksgiving dinner. When your family says, hey, pick us a six pack. And you're like, all right, here we go. And it's 7%, so no. it's got a little in no. there. Everyone's gonna it's get along. Wisconsin. Whole hog, winner, winner, chicken dinner. It was the first beer. The next one, Voodoo Ranger Atomic Pumpkin. So you all know New Belgium. That one got a pretty fucking bad score, five out of 10. I can't remember if this is the one that was just really heavily spiced or, um, I'm not sure. But I did not like it. Oh, this was the one that was really watery, I think. That it had a good nose, but the palate was really thin and watery, I think. Don't, don't quote me on that. If you, when you but watch yeah, the video, you'll know. There's nothing to that. Yeah, it's like iced, it's like watered down, right? Um, if I'm thinking of that one. It's like a biscuit without butter. Dude, that's exact, that's the one. Yeah, that's no. exactly right. This one was a five out of 10, so poor showing. Number three, Catawba. These guys are from Asheville, is that right? North Carolina, Morganton. King Don's Pumpkin Ale was number three. This one also got a terrible score. They were almost neck and neck. This was five, this was 5.1. This one's kind of watery too. It's all nose and I don't know. Not a good one. Not a good pick for me. 5.1 out of 10. Come on, guys. And Catawba actually has some good beers. But, uh, I don't know. I think they shit the bed with this one. That's a lot of allspice. Just all allspice. Yeah. All right. The next one was Firestarter Smoked Pumpkin Porter. <laughs> Aptly named because this only smelled like smoke. That was the big red one. That's the, oh, is this the big red one? Yeah. Are you sure? Or maybe on the palate it was. 
I remember on the nose. Let's see, that's four. This got a two out of ten. No, King by the Dawn's way. was the big red one. This, this is the, the big, big red. That's yeah, the big red. It's like all spices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one though, it's just all smoke and all porter. There's no pumpkin in it at all. Can't I don't. Smell anything. I don't understand why they would. <laughs> the name is appropriate, fire starter, because it is kind of like a campfire. But there's no pumpkin. I mean, come on, guys. You guys did not put any pumpkin in this. You didn't put any spices in it either. Okay? Don't bullshit. Fat bottom. Yeah, dude. That's it smells smoke. more like it smells more like hickory. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's wood and smoke. Yeah. And that's that. Which is cool. Coffee. coffee. Well, that's not bad. If if you were but if you were buying a pumpkin beer, no. And you got this, you'd be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> It's completely mislabeled. It's not a, a, a bad beer per se, um, but in this lineup, it scored really bad. A two out of ten. No bueno. Let me finish that off. The next one. Oh, this is Catawba again. Emperor Don's Imperial Pumpkin Ale. And this one you did like. This one was good. Yeah, this one got. Oh, and it's Imperial too. Yeah. It didn't drink like an Imperial. Uh, I feel like. When I had it, I was saying it was the most approachable and kind of refreshing and bright of the group. What's the ABV? It's one of the highest ones. 7.8, 7 8, yeah. 7.8%, I mean, that's it's pretty strong, but it does not drink like that. This was good. I mean, it beat the shit out of yeah. Little Pumpkin. For sure. King Don versus Emperor Don. That's why I separated them. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the King Don's really no bueno, but uh, Emperor Don, and it comes in a tall boy. Yep, comes in a big boy. Probably only in uh, four packs, I would imagine. Yeah, probably so. This one actually got a 7.4 also, which looking back, number one did too. So these guys are actually tied for first place. The Whole Hog and the Catawba Empe Emperor Don's Imperial Pumpkin Ale. No. Oh, um, neck and neck. The final boss. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking prairie. I should have known. Prairie's basic Becky. Which, you know, Prairie is known for making this fucking big, giant ass beers, like birthday bomb. And uh, this was a giant beer, but it was so boozy and just fucking intense and heavy that all of the nuance of any fucking semblance of pumpkin or pumpkin spice was just kind of lost for me. It just tastes like fucking boozy stout. It's like everything make it is fucking molasses. Yeah, and it's always, yeah, just heavy fucking just intense. It's like punch you in the fucking mouth. You just ate dinner. Yeah, it is. You just like a, drank dinner. It's like a fucking entree. <laughs> With, because we're doing pumpkin beers, this got a six out of 10, which I think puts it in third or fourth place, maybe fourth place, something like that. To be fair though, I would put this rank very high just as its own kind of beer. It's delicious. It's good in its own way. It's not a just, pumpkin beer. Just not in this it's not setting. A, it's not a pumpkin beer. No, it's a booze bomb. Yeah. You know, you could probably age this thing for fucking a decade and it still tastes pretty good. Right now, though, yeah, I mean, it, just, it doesn't fit this. This is not, this doesn't fit the demographic. Yeah, great. Even calling it Basic Becky, they're trying to hit that market, yeah, and yeah. that's that's unfortunate that they did that, because your Basic Becky is not going to drink this. Your Basic Becky would fucking spit this out. Uh, and her husband, I don't drink beer. She would take one sip, and her husband would finish it. That's right. Well, Becky's not married. Obviously. Oh yeah. Well, she's been married a couple times. <laughs> yeah, she's been married. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Whole Hog and Emperor Don. These are the winners today. Catawba, Emperor Don, and Whole Hog. They just call it Pumpkin Ale, and that's appropriate because that's exactly what it fucking is, and it's a good one at that. The other ones, not in the right category, and just bad versions of what we're doing here. So now you know. Thanks. To my fucking boy here. You're you're a, yeah, you're fucking whole hog. Fucking, my boy Johnny here. Thank you. And I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. <laughs>